Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video. And so in this video, we'll be talking about the tropics. We have Tropical Storm K over in the Eastern Pacific. And then we have Hurricane Earl as well as three disturbances over in the Atlantic. So there is a new area highlighted off Africa that we're going to be talking about. And so before I go into details... Okay, so we are going to be starting out with Tropical Storm K over in the Eastern Pacific. And as of right now, it remains a problem for the Bay California Peninsula. So Tropical Storm Warning still uh, is still in effect for the northern portion of the area. So K is likely to become post-tropical maybe by sometime tomorrow and dissipate maybe in the early part of the new week. But as of right now, the system has maximum sustained winds of 50 miles per hour and it is accelerating towards the north-northwest at 13 miles per hour. Let us go ahead and now take a look at the Atlantic Basin. So here we are looking at a satellite view of it and we are seeing that we have Hurricane Earl churning up uh, uh, in the vicinity of Bermuda, we have Invest 95L as well as that other disturbance and there should be another wave emerging over the next several days that is going to be one to watch. So let's go ahead and look at these systems individually, starting off with Earl. Okay, and we're seeing here that Earl is not the healthiest hurricane right now and it has been struggling as a matter of fact because it is in uh, conditions that are not highly conducive to enable rapid intensification. That is why we haven't seen it really become a major hurricane as yet because yesterday was expected to become a cat 4 however now we are seeing that it is not really intensifying as a matter of fact it weakened yesterday and it re-intensified earlier this morning so looking at the cone forecast for it a tropical storm warning remains in effect for bermuda but the storm is moving away so i expect that this tropical storm warning will be lifted maybe by the next advisory or so and it should become post tropical maybe by tomorrow afternoon and then maybe dissipate sometime during the middle part of next week so Earl is not likely to become a major hurricane anymore and we'll take a look at the conditions out there very soon but let's go ahead and look at these other disturbances so we have this disturbance actually designated invest 95 L and in yesterday's video the chance was at 70% well now it has decreased and the reason for that is because that window of opportunity for us to possibly see development is closing so the system is encountering unfavorable conditions and and it is going to be unlikely that we see any development of a tropical cyclone coming from Invest 95L. So it is likely that this won't be Fiona. So uh, we'll have to wait a little longer on Fiona to develop. And here it is on satellite. We're seeing that we have some of that shower and thunderstorm activity, but that's all the way from the center of the system. So uh, it isn't likely that we're going to be seeing much happening because of that unfavorable shear. So uh, let's go ahead and move on to the other disturbances. So now here we have this one given a low 20% chance to develop. So this is located to the south southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands. And so as it accelerates towards the west or the west northwest, it will probably encounter some conducive conditions and get itself together and we could even see this becoming a tropical cyclone possibly but i don't think that we're going to be seeing anything major become of this and as a matter of fact the formation chance for this also decreased from 30 percent and so we're going to see what happens with it as time goes by and on satellite here we have it not much show and thunderstorm activity taking place within the system here but as i said we'll have to wait and see what is going to be happening with this one if it is going to be pulling through and getting itself together maybe developing into a tropical cyclone and i should mention that uh this is the first hurricane season since 2014 i believe where we haven't had a major hurricane up to this point and as a matter of fact in 2014 it was a below average season and the major hurricane that developed was on the 11th of september i believe so uh, it's been a pretty long while since we've seen the, the tropics this quiet up until this point where we don't have a major hurricane. So let's see if this is going to be the story for the rest of September and let's see what October has to offer. But moving on to that third disturbance now. So we see this area that is highlighted off the coast of Africa. There's a 20% chance that we could possibly see the development of a tropical wave once it emerges off the coast of Africa. And uh, we definitely have to wait and see what's going to be happening with this 
this one. So models were showing something maybe developing out there as we head towards the latter part of uh, September, but only time will tell. Development is all going to be dependent on the favorability of the environment. So let's go ahead and now talk about conditions in the tropics starting off with the wind shear. So the green means that the shear is favorable, the yellow means neutral, and the red means unfavorable. So we're seeing that in the vicinity of Earl, there it is accelerating into more unfavorable uh, wind shear and that is going to be helping it to eventually dissipate and will prevent it from intensifying into a major hurricane. And in the vicinity of Invest 95L, there we also see that unfavorable shear uh, that is in the vicinity of the disturbance and so it isn't likely that we are going to be seeing anything major become of that as well in terms of the dry air now so earl is not really being affected by dry air however we see that it is basically enveloping invest 95 l out there so it has dry air behind it dry air ahead of it and that is also going to be helping to keep the intensity at a minimum so it is unlikely that we're going to be seeing anything really become of this system and as for that disturbance uh, that disturbance to the south southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands uh, it is likely that it is going to be be affected maybe by the, all that dry air out there so uh, we might not see anything significant to become of that and as for the wave to emerge off Africa only time will tell what is going to be happening with it. All right, and so in terms of ocean temperatures, ocean temperatures across the North Atlantic have been above average, but the main inhibiting factors of tropical development have been the uh, the strong upper level winds as well as that dry air, especially that dry air throughout the month of July. Even if there was to be development of systems, even if the uh, wind shear was conducive and, and a particular disturbance was in an area of very warm ocean temperatures because of all the dry air infiltration, we didn't see anything in July. And also throughout the month of August. So uh, this season has been, I would say up to this point, it has been overestimated because we have not seen what we typically see when an active season is anticipated. So we have not seen anything major thus far, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I mean, many areas have been affected by tropical cyclones over the past couple of years, and some areas are still recovering from tropical cyclone impacts. So fortunately, there hasn't been anything to really extend recovery efforts and make things even worse in those areas, such as even the Gulf Coast of the U.S. that was battered by Laura and Ida. And so guys, that is really it for this update. So those three disturbances out there are all given low chances to develop. We'll see what happens with that new wave to emerge off Africa, but it is unlikely that 95L will become anything. And Earl is going to be uh, eventually dissipating as we progress into the end of this week and into next week. And then as for K over in the Eastern Pacific, it is also a weakening and dissipating tropical cyclone. And of course, I'm going to be keeping you updated once it is necessary. And so that is really it for this video. And if you found it to be quite informative, please give a thumbs up and you can share your thoughts in the comments or ask a question. I'll try to respond as best and as soon as I can. And of course, remember to always be otherwise.